أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين عاتم النبيين سيدنا ومولانا أبي القاسم مصطفى محمد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وأهل الأغضة من لساني يفقه قولي إن الله ملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا كتب عليكم الصيام كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون صلوات I'm certainly going to make some mistake. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs> it's hard to be actually standing here and give a Jumma khutbah, especially when people are here who have been doing this regularly, our scholars, our speakers. Another, uh, another disadvantage for me, especially, is a very short time. 108 is the azan, and that takes about three minutes to azan, and 135 is the salah time. That gives you 27 minutes, in which you have to do khutbah and all these sort of things. Now, Sheikh Yusuf had made, made it even worse for me. Um, we are obviously in the, almost in the middle of Ramadan. And uh, when I was told that uh, we need uh, one of your you know, services, one of those uh, Juma, and I thought it will be in the middle of Ramadan, then me and my son were preparing it together. Or he was asked to do a youth speech. So something he has already covered, those who were here on last Thursday, uh, Obviously, it's a Ramadan thing, and one of the most uh, sort of common ayat you've been quoted, will be quoted, and uh, you've been hearing it for ages. It's uh, Surah Al-Baqarah, uh, verse number 183. It says, Ya O believers, the fasting has been prescribed upon you, has been prescribed from the people before you. Now, they are different. Obviously, it's clearly say that people have been fasting. But there are certain opinions about that, whether they were fasting in a very similar way, whether they were fasting prescribed only for Ambiya. I was just reading some of this um, um, tafsir. It clearly said that Sadat Musa fasted for 40 days, Sadat Isa fasted for 40 days, and we know that there are different versions of fasting. We have know about the Easter, that, that uh, the Christians fast uh, by giving up a specific type of food they like, could it be a chocolate, could it be a potato, whatever. We know that the Hindus fast, they have a fasting, uh, they have a certain type of drinking or just one session, something like that. But there is hardly anybody who's fasting is like that. Allah says that I prescribe on fasting upon you as it before for other people. Why? La Allahum tattaqoon. I have actually discussed something about this uh, taqwa and muttaqi because the format of the Juma is in the first khutbah you talk about the taqwa, including yourself. And then second, you talk about the general current affairs. Your taqwa is not going to leave us at all. Now, the very f uh, first, the biggest, uh, the surah, al-Baqarah, it starts with Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim alif lam mim I remember that many years ago, there was some, somebody gave a really good speech, but that puzzled me and that made me thinking since that time. That he said, Dalikal kitabu la rayba fi. There is no doubt about this in this book. Hudalil muttaqin. But this book is only guiding, guidance for the people who are muttaqi. This is actually a very <laughs> tough, tough standard. Muttaqi, I remember that Sadiq Khazan Sahib recited many years ago in a short, uh, 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 succinct description of the taqwa is that people who do not miss any wajibat and do not commit any muharramat. So all the wajibat, all the fard should be done and all the haram should be missed out. Then we can muttaqi. When we say Shahru Ramadan, it's also say, I think my son has covered it. We should say Ramadan, it's a Shahru Ramadan. It's in, even in the, the Quran, it says, Shahru Ramadan, Alladhi Unzila Fihil Quran. 
because ramadan is one of the name of allah and it also say looking at the tafsir the rams could be the word rams is referred to that time when the fasting was prescribed in Medina and you know that Middle East is a very hot place with a very hot day sun, scorching sun, heats up the stones and, and the, 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 in the land. It make, makes it very hot and also say that because one of the hadith says, As-Sumu Jannah. So, so the Rosa is like a shield for you, it's a dhal for you. It protects you from the sins. It actually burns out your sin. Now looking at this, uh, I'm sure that most of you having, uh, will be having a, a regular information, uh, you know, sort of uh, <laughs> a source called uh, Ayatollah or uh, Sheikh uh, WhatsApp. Sometimes you look at some of those things, it's very nice. Because you don't have to believe on everything, but some of the things makes really, really sense. And also now the science and technology are like more and more and more. So all the other physical, physiological, medical benefits of fasting is being more apparent and need to be more uh, into the every person's knowledge. But I remember somebody said to many years ago that every single Islamic, especially the Wajibat Act, it has lots of benefits for us in this world and also the hereafter. It's like saying that if we, I remember that uh, Sayyid Amar did a speech here talking about uh, what are the um, disadvantage of eating pork. So if really the people are aware of those things or the goodness of fasting, people would fast, people would. But the, the, the idea of uh, the worship is that it's not I'm doing this because it's going to give me a lot of benefit. It would give you a lot of benefit. I'm going to give up because it will save me from loss of, uh, you know, after effect, it would. So all the muharramat will save you from lots of uh, uh, consequences after, uh, after effects. And all the good deed will give you lots of advantage. But the bandagi, is the ibadat, is the, the worship is that I am doing it solely because Allah asked me to do so. Advantage of uh, fasting is that uh, one of the hadith said that there is a door in the heaven called rayyan. And only people who are fasting would be entering through those doors. I remember the Sheikh uh, had mentioned a couple of times that uh, one of the Hadith Qusi said, I'm going to use this Arabic because I might get it wrong, but he said basically the Roda is for me. And the two versions. I will give it reward. So it's like saying that if you do a top performance uh, in the uni, you know, maybe vice chancellors give, say, okay, this is the best uh, student ever I had in my university. So instead of a, a dean or somebody, I'm going to give this certificate to myself. So Allah says, either I'm going to give it to it myself, or I am the reward. Now, to be honest, I'm not uh, knowledgeable enough to say what the reward would be. Uh, but the point is that for every single deed, and especially for this particular one, says, La tattakun. I would like to discuss a little bit about the taqwa, because as I just said, that uh, when I was preparing uh, 10 minutes, for the first khutbah and roughly 10 20 for the next khutbah, it's really, really short. You can hardly say anything. You see, I've got this notes here, how many I looked at it? Because I'm not a very, you know, sort of good speaker, so I have to have some uh, prompt. When you fast, if you are fasting for 18, 19, 20 hours, I'm not going to discuss this new, you know, sort of discussion of whether we fast it normal day or whatever. Then when the people fast for a good day, a normal day, for 30 days, you certainly, certainly get lots of benefit. So that is one, which is what you call uh, lowest, because you can't cheat. I remember that many years ago when I was uh, doing a postdoc, I was fasting and somebody asked me, one of my, my colleague, she said, uh, are you fasting? I said, yes. He said, uh, and she said something like that, can't you cheat? And I said, what do you mean you can cheat? I said, uh, and she says, like, you pretend that you are fasting, but you eat or drink. And I said, well, who am I doing it for? And she said, what do you mean? I said, I'm not doing it for X, Y, and Z. I'm doing it for Allah. Can I cheat with him? And then I asked her actually a question. I said, okay, you have to be honest in your daily routine. Forget about the Allah if you don't believe it. If you're driving late at night, you're on a crossroad, the traffic is, light is red. There's no traffic. At that time, there was no cameras. Like a few years ago, there was no camera. And, and the traffic light, where you stop is red, because you stop is red. And uh, there is no traffic, and you are in a rush. Would you jump? Would you just go across? 
And she said, no, I won't. And I said, why not? She said, I shouldn't. I said, that I shouldn't. If you can't jump a traffic light because you think that's what the law says, not causing any danger, not making a, a, you know, a big a criminal offense, but you think that's how it should be done, so why should I? So this is basically what I'm trying to say in, is that fasting at a very low level gets you some benefit. Now the next thing is that uh, do we only fast for our stomach? If we get lots of benefit. It's, it's, I mean, I was just looking at the, the whole list of diseases, including the cancer. And especially as we know, that one of the prophets said that fast so you become healthy. And Imam Ali said that fasting is very important because all the sources of the disease start from your tummy and we eat too much anyway. I, one thing I've noticed since I've been in this country, there are two types of uh, communities uh, in Western world, including Europe and America and some ballad, people eat too much. And some places they don't eat at all. And they're going to take me somewhere. So I'm gonna... But some of these things we should really need to just talk about it. As I said, the time is really short. I haven't really gone into what I was, wanted to say because I was just looking at one of the WhatsApp messages. I, I showed it to some of the youngster, youngster kids here. They showed that uh, they were the Dasar Khan. And there were lots of people saying something in Afghanistan. And some of you know the word Bhusi Tukura. You know the, the old crumbly bread. They just had the bread spread on this uh, sofa and they were having tea without milk. And then I said to you know, my kids as well, to other people, Mom, I don't like this because this is flavor I don't like. I don't like this milk shape because I know I've never liked a strawberry or, or, or a banana flavor. I only like chocolate flavor. These are the human beings. Unfortunately, there was a guy, I think fortunately, because I use it for my, you know, to explain it. There was a boy which you can clearly see that apart from lots of adults, there was a boy who was a teenager. I said, this is the boy who is fasting and he's eating. That's what, that's what, the next level is that are we really fasting just for our stomach? Are we fasting, are, are we fasting is applicable to our eyes, to our tongue, to our limbs, to our ears? Because I remember that I was talking to somebody, uh, he was an... Um, the brother of a very famous Malana, he used to live in London, now he's moved to America. He said he used to smoke and he used to um, drink a lot of tea. So he said, first few days, I become so uh, grumpy, so in Urdu, he said, Chirchira, that all of my colleagues said, don't talk to him. He started fasting. After a week, he may be a bit normal, but for the first few days, he'll be very, very chirchira. And that's what happened. I, for, Alhamdulillah, I don't smoke, so I'm not probably that bad. But it does affect because sometimes you feel that you know, it's like, I don't know, but it actually teaches you otherwise. So your tongue, your ears, your eyes, and your limbs should also be fasting. Because lots of people say, and maybe I'll come into the, 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 um, the next um, uh, part of the khutbah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Qul huwa Allahu ahad, Allahu samad, lam yalid wa lam yulad wa lam yukullahu kufuan ahad. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillah rabbil alameen, wa salatu wa salamu ala ashtafil anbiya wal musaleen. Allahumma salli ala muhammadin abdika wa rasulik, wa aminika wa safiyik, wa habibika wa khiyataka min khalqik, wa hafiz sirrik, wa balighi rasalatik, afdala wa ahsana wa atmala wa akmal, wa aska wa anma wa atiba wa athara wa asna wa akthara, ma sallayta wa barakta wa tarahamta, wa tahannanta wa sallamta ala ahdi min ibadika wa anbiyaika wa rasulik, wa sifwatika wa ahli al-karamata ilayka min khalqik. اللهم صل على علي أمير المؤمنين وصي رسول رب العالمين أبدك وليك وخير رسولك وحجتك على خلقك وآيتك الكبرى والنبي العظيم وصل على صديقة طاهرة فاطمة سيدة النساء العالمين وصل على سبت الرحمة وإمام الهدى الحسن والحسين سيد الشباب أهل الجنة وصل على أئمة المسلمين علي بن الحسين ومحمد بن علي وجعفر بن محمد وموسى بن جعفر وعلي بن موسى ومحمد بن علي وعلي بن محمد والحسن بن علي والقلف الحادي وجدك على عبادك ومنائك في بلادك صلاة كثيرة دائمة اللهم صل على ولي أمرك القائم المؤمل والأرض المنتظر وهفه بملائكتك المقربين وأيده بالقدس يا رب العالمين The final part of those um, the status, the third level is for those who are not only fasting 
physically, but spiritually, and their thoughts are so controlled, they are always in a state of continuous uh, relation with the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that other way, say, I was Aymat and Ambiya. In this next verse of, uh, in fact, Surah 185 of the um, Surah Baqarah, it says, Shahr Ramadan, Ladi Unzila Fihil Quran. I remember that one of the khutbah I touched, I was actually talking about the Quran, and I started with this uh, very famous hadith when uh, Prophet says, uh, uh, in Hadith Thaqlan, where it says, uh, Kitab Allah, wa Tarz al Hibati. And we had a bit of discussion about it that uh, when we were kids, we used to say that, okay, we are very attached with al Hibat and uh, and, and that Allah Sunnah has taken the Quran. And one of the probably their sort of uh, approved to attachment to the Quran is that they have this tarawih, which is I'm, fully, I'm sure it's awfully hard for a to be started about, I don't know, 11, 11, 30, and then our uh, recitation of Quran for 30 days. Why do we not associate ourselves with the Quran? And there are many, many, you know, things I can talk about it. Because first of all, it says, the Prophet said that if you attach with both, you will not get astray. So I'm not saying that I'm astray, but one thing is for sure that from the Prophet Hadith, if you are not associated with the Quran, I'm not going to go into the discussion of that, are we really associated with the Bayt? But let's put in this way, yes, when we have a khushali and when we have a, uh, you know, happy and sad days related to Aima, we try to make some effort and we obviously uh, you know, celebrate all the waladat and commemorate all the shahada. So at least there is some sort of a attachment. And obviously lots of people are going for the ziyarat and doing lots of things, which is not wajib, but it shows that how uh, you know, close or how much you are love in with the Bayt. So at least there is some validity of our, in our claim that we are associated with the Bayt. But Prophet says, Kitab Allah, wa itayati now, unfortunately, I was talking to somebody and I said, have you not, why have we never had any a really good Quran recitation and, and, and teaching and discussion? In Iran, they have lots of these sessions. I mean, here, last time I remember that we, Jamaat, organized um, a recitation competition and there were two adult participants. So if they wanted to give a third prize, first, second, and third, there was not a, not a third person. That is our... That is our attachment with the Quran. And Quran uh, um, in Surah Qadr, it says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Inna anzalnahu fi laylatul qadr, wa maa adaraka maa laylatul qadr, laylatul qadr khair min alfay shah, tanazzalul malaikata wa ruhu fiha bidna rabbihim min kulli amdin salam hiya tamat lai faj. It also that the, the Quran is not only the book which is revealed in this uh, month of Ramadan, or oh, the Torah, uh, the, the Boor and Injil, all these books are actually revealed in Ramadan. So there is a really good attachment with this month of Ramadan and with the Quran. And there is actually a very good attachment with us throughout our life because according to the Prophet, we cannot attain a proper guidance if you are not uh, associate, if you are not mutamassik with both of them. And I remember that there was a hadith for uh, our fourth Imam. He said, if I have been on a an island and there is no person in the east and the west and if i had a copy of quran i am not really under, uh, i do i can understand that why he needs a copy of quran he the quran but to explain it to us probably he said if i have a copy of quran that is sufficient for me so he's saying there is nobody in the east in the west he is an island by himself holding a copy of quran it is sufficient for me well the thing i just want to talk about it and i should probably stop is that um, um there are certain um, um, ibadat, as I said, that give you really those sort of things which you are looking for. For example, when you fast, as I said before, even if you fast properly, that gives you, I'm sure there are lots of doctors and medical professionals here, so lots of things which for which you spend a lot of money, and I'm talking about the people who actually don't fast, we don't have to spend because we fast. So that shows clearly that by making uh, Allah happy, by getting a nearer to Allah and by obeying his command, we are getting worldly benefits, financially benefits, physical benefits, medical benefits, physiological benefits. So if we are associated with that, one thing I probably have noticed that sometimes we say something and we don't really mean it. I think one of the good examples was, and probably that's the last thing I would probably say, that when we claim, as I said, there was uh, actually had uh, this message on our WhatsApp. I really liked it. 
Once the guy actually went to see somebody who's an Arif, a very learned person. So as it happened, that person like me goes, say, Aga, or Sheikh, or Sayyid, give me some advice. He was a really Arif, probably. He said, I'll just give you one advice. And the advice was really surprising. He said, if you don't think Allah is equal to you, at least don't think is lower than you. That guy thought, I don't know, this Sheikh is probably, you know, Allah is talking about. He said, okay, thank you. And he said, no, that's fine for you. So he said, okay, I shall be leaving in the evening. He said, don't leave in the evening because the, the Arif wanted to give him a proper lesson. And that is a lesson for us as well, including myself. He said, stay tonight and have breakfast and then go. He said, fine. So the next day, he woke up, that Arif sent him a breakfast tray with lots of good, you know, paratha and kebab and omelette and all these sort of things. And besides that, on a small bowl, a bit of a, uh, it seemed like a leftover dal from a night before, and there were one or two uh, suki roti, you know, dry bread. Before he started eating, there was a knock at the door, and he said, give me on, in the name of Allah. I'm sure you're probably getting there, I'm probably hanging your heading too. What he did, which probably I would have done the same thing, he took that bowl of the dal and those two suki dry bread, gave it to the, the fakir. So when he finished all this good uh, breakfast, he said, uh, I, you know, Sheikh, I want to leave. He said, I will, leave, I will still give you the same advice. Do not take, do not consider Allah lesser than you. At least consider him similar to yourself. He said, Naga, what are you talking about? Who on the pretty state of who on the earth will take Allah lesser than himself? He said, well, you just did. He said, what? He said, yes. Do you remember the word they say? When you're about to start, now the Arif apparently wasn't there, but probably he knew he was an Arif. He said, what did he do? When he said, you mean the name of Allah, what you gave him? If you would have thought him equal to yourself, at least you, you, you should have shared half of the good breakfast with him and half of the bad breakfast with him. If you would have thought him better than you, in the name of Allah, you should have him the good breakfast, you should have eaten this dal and the dry bread. What you did, you gave him the bowl of a, 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 a dal, which was from last, last night, and one of those two dry bread. All of our actions is been recorded. And all of the actions would be personified. And I have got a whole list of examples. One of the very short ones that I probably have said it here, that one of the time Musa was uh, walking around the river bank, and one of the guys who was not uh, William Allah put uh, his uh, fishing net from there, and in three go he made a small, sort of a, a big, uh, you know, sort of a small mountain of the fish. Well, the moment came in, he did uh, uh, was going to do uh, namaz, and he put his uh, net three times. The third time he caught one fish. So Musa said, "Oh Allah, what is this?" Then it's called what for personification. He said, "Do you want to see what his rewards are? Look at." So he then he saw a huge mountain of gold and diamond and emeralds. He said, "This is his reward." Every single small deed would personify. Now remember that mention is, Last thing is that Imam is about to come, inshallah. The, the things are changing really fast. We can't say, nobody can say, but I remember somebody saying, and I've quoted this thing here, that for people who are about my age, if we live another about 20, 30 years, Imam will, inshallah, come at that time. Things are moving very fast. Are we prepared? Are we moving towards it? This Ramadan is like our, what you call, a, a, a practice, our commando training. If we train to, I don't know, I mean, my kids, are, my, my daughter is doing GCSE. I'm really so desperate that she gets all the A stars, even more. Are we getting time to get an A stars? And in, in, in math and English, level nine, that's the highest one. I don't want to comprise anything less than that. Are we doing enough to be in the army of the Imam? Because the point is that whatever efforts are, we're not going to get uh, uh, by cheating and go to the top university. We know that Oxford University is the top university in the world. I wanted my daughter to go there, but are we also preparing to go into Imam's army? Because people have told me that you know, the priorities are different. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Wal asr inna al-insan lafi khusr illa al-ladhina amunu wa mili salihat wa tawasu bil-haqi wa tawasu bil-sabr.